Good morning everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to Driving Wars Rugby Thoughts and today I'm going to be talking about the global season. Um, a lot of people have uh, been asking me my opinion on the global season and how it should work out and it's clearly something that everybody wants. Uh, the top 14 of either Premiership and Pro 12 all talked about not having to play games during international windows um, and Super Rugby don't want that break in uh, the middle of their season for the international uh, tours down under in June. So it appears that uh, a lot of the people want it. Um, also there's talk about making sure there's proper rest for the players um, as well. Generally when we're talking about, we're talking about the international players um, so we'll just have to we'll have a look at that later um, later on. Uh, Beaumont who obviously is the new guy at World Rugby um, has been saying this is one of the key things he needs to sort out and has been talking about the uh, Six Nations moving to April, for example. Um, the Welsh Rugby Union have said that pretty much everything's on the table. The IRFU IR, um, and the RFU have said, hey, if it ain't break, broke, don't fix it. Which basically means the Six Nations makes lots of money, don't you dare touch it. Um, New Zealand have gone as far as suggesting that they will actually stop playing the Northern Hemisphere teams um, if something doesn't change. So it's all coming to a boil. And at the moment, we have nothing lined up and for after the Rugby World Cup in 2019 in Japan. So a lot of people say summer rugby is the answer. Um, and I would say, no, that's not necessarily the answer. Um, I don't think moving or shuffling things around is the answer to a global season. Also, a global season doesn't necessarily mean that um, the domestic season of North and South is at the same time of the year. They can be at different times of the year. They just have. To, it's just a matter of making sure the international rugby fits in around them nicely. So um, I don't think summer rugby is necessarily the answer. Not that I'm against summer rugby per se, um, which I am in some ways, but I don't think that that's you know, that's the answer here. Um, again, a bit like Bill Beaumont saying moving the Six Nations to April. Um, again, to me that's just um, shuffling the deck chairs on the sinking ship rather than actually producing a proper um, answer. Um, as we don't know what that means for everything else. And it is everything else that matters. The real problem is actually the structure of the leagues north and south. So um, in the Southern Hemisphere, you um, have basically probably three levels that players actually play at. So you've got international um, rugby, you then got the um, super rugby, uh, and then you also have the domestic competitions such as the Curry Cup, ITM Cup. Um, and the NRC uh, in Australia. Sorry, it's not the ITM Cup, now it's the Mitre 10 Cup in New Zealand. Whereas in the Northern Hemisphere, players play either international um, or club rugby. Um, and yes, there is European rugby, but that's the same teams, and that's the key the key differentiator here. So what that means is, um, and is that um, in the Southern Hemisphere, the international players don't play that domestic competition. Um, the Curry Cup or the uh, Mighty Ten Cup or the NRC, um, unless they're coming back from injury or they need um, some match practice. The, um, whereas in uh, the Northern Hemisphere, we don't have that um, third tier for the non-international players to play. Um, so that's one of the reasons that we have a longer um, club season is that the players and the clubs need a certain number of games um, to get paid, basically. So in, the, in Super Rugby, um, we have 17 um, regular seasons and three playoff um, weeks, making a to mean, meaning you need a 20-week window. Um, if we go to Europe, you look at the EBU Premiership and Pro 12, you've got 22 weeks of the regular season, plus another two weeks um, of playoffs, plus six regular of, or six pool stages of Europe, plus three, play three rounds of playoffs. So you're looking at a 33-week window, um, or 13 extra weeks, or three months longer. Um, than the Southern Hemisphere. And that doesn't even include um, the Anglo-Welsh Cup or the LV Cup um, in there as well. Uh, I've taken that out because I think the clubs will be happy to negotiate on that one and lose that. I won't be too concerned about that. So what really needs to happen um, to get a proper global season is a restructure of the game and of the clubs in Europe um, so that we have a, a layer or a, a competition for the um, club players um, that is not uh, that it based, uh, but not the international players. The competition that can happen during the international windows, which is what the I say the Curry Cup and stuff does, that allows you to reduce the size of your main competition. The problem with that is 
um, is if we talk, listen to people like James Haskell, he thinks that rugby players should be played um, similar amounts as football players, um, which is crazy money. <laughs> and uh, good luck to him if he gets it. But clearly the rugby players would like to be paid more. Um, and that means more money needs to come in. And that means if you're cutting games, um, you're going to be cutting money coming in. So um, whilst the players and the, um, are in the players' unions um, want there to be better player welfare and less games, they also want to get paid more. Um, and it's a catch-22 situation. You can't have both of those. Um, so, um, so as I think the problem is actually league structure in Europe rather than when particular leagues are being played, uh, I really can't see there being real change post-2019. Uh, um, maybe um, the uh, Europe season will start a month or so later, um, meaning that the uh, the June tours happen in July uh, to allow Super Rugby to happen in, complete, um, uh, in, a, in a complete block, um, but or, or, or maybe not. But that's I think that'll be about all we're going to see. I think, gonna, I think we are just going to see a shuffling of what's there, rather than the proper structural change that we need for a real global season. So uh, that's how I, I see things. Um, and I think one, whilst people concentrate a lot on the international players for player welfare, I think we also have to be aware um, that if we reduce those, those the games they play, we need to provide something for the non-international players to play whilst international players are away uh, on international duty. Uh, they need those games not only for money, um, and to get paid, um, but also to develop and uh, and to keep match fit and practice. Um, we can't just we can't just survive, um, or we, we, without uh, those extra games. So, thank you all for listening. Um, this is part of a uh, blogging challenge I'm doing, so you should see uh, regular posts on YouTube. So if you want to catch the others, please don't forget to subscribe and. Uh, or, or subscribe to the newsletter in the bottom to get my weekly uh, driving more newsletter which lists all my videos and posts. Thanks guys.